Hello, welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afiasi Mama. Let's roll back the blind to the year 1590. And I did cover the story in one of my other videos, so go check it out. It's about the governor of Roanoke Island Colony. His name is John White, and he's the guy pictured here. He returns from England to find no trace of the colonists he had left there three years earlier. I'm going to put a link on this video, top right hand corner, right now, so that you can find out more about this intriguing event. So, John White, born circa 1540 to circa 1593 was an English colonial governor, explorer, artist, which is quite interesting. I didn't know that about him. And he was also a cartographer. White was among those who sailed with Richard Grenville in the first attempt to colonize Roanoke Island in 1585. I'm going to show you a picture. This would um, hopefully jog your memory. I had this in my previous video as well. Croatoan, you know, um, I remember, you know, struggling with the word at the time. I think I did pronounce Croatian at one point where I saw Croatoan is a word that was inscribed on the tree. And I did mention something about that, you know, that um, they thought, John White thought that that was a, well, I wouldn't say a cryptic message. I mean, that's self-explanatory. It implied that the people who they came back for had gone to this island, Croatoan Island, but they went there and they were nowhere to be found. And then obviously I had my assumptions as to what had happened to them. So check out the video to find out more. So moving swiftly on. Um, so he was an English colonial governor. I did mention that explorer, artist, cartographer. White was among those who sailed with Richard Grenville in the first attempt to colonize Roanoke Island in 1585. Acting as artist and map maker, to the expedition. He would most famously briefly serve as the governor of the second attempt to found Roanoke colony on the same island in 1587 and discover the colonists had mysteriously vanished. During his time at Roanoke Island, he made a number of watercolor sketches. Interesting, this would probably very likely be one of them. So he made a number of watercolor, water, watercolor sketches um, of the surrounding landscape and the native Algonquin peoples. These works are significant as they are the most informative illustrations of a Native American society of the Eastern Seaboard. Interesting. The surviving original watercolors are now preserved in the print room of the British Museum. I have been there, interestingly. I have been there. I have um, worked there briefly several years ago, about 10, 15 uh, let's see, um, 2004 or five yeah, to now is um, yeah, 15 years ago, roughly. Uh, yeah, I was there. I had a stint at the British Museum in London. So in 1587, White became governor of Sir Walter Raleigh's failed attempt at a permanent settlement on Roanoke Island, known as the Lost Colony. So I did mention that, I think. This was the earliest effort to establish a permanent English colony in the New World. White's granddaughter, Virginia Dare, was the first English child born in the Americas. Interesting. Virginia Dare. Okay, so let's move on to the year 1887. And on this day, this guy called Marcus Gave, who I think is an interesting, um, an interesting personality. He was born August 17th, 1887, and he's um, a black nationalist from Jamaica. He created the Back to America movement, first in Jamaica, then in New York, centered in Harlem. Gave was a powerful orator and spoke across the U.S., urging black Americans to return to their ancestral homeland and installing a sense of pride in black heritage. Garvey founded a number of businesses to support the movement, including the Black Star Line in 1919. That's 120, 101 years ago, and the newspaper Negro World. However, 
Gavi's policies of separatism brought him enemies and he was arrested for mainly fraud in 1922, male fraud, I think it was, in 1922. Interesting. Um, 72 years before his sentence was commuted by President Calvin Coolidge in 1927, Gavi lost much of his influence in his latter years, but remained a powerful inspiration for later civil rights leaders. He was born in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. So that's Marcus Gavi for you, who understandably wanted um, African Americans, Black Americans to go back home because they didn't feel welcome in uh, the United States. Not much has changed today, sadly. Um, we know, we've heard about the year of the return, where the celebration of 400 years of slavery and how a lot of African Americans have um, decided to move to leave America permanently to settle on the African continent. And Ghana, I think, has the highest concentration of African Americans at the moment. Obviously, they have a castle, Elmina Castle, where um, most of the slaves who left Ghana had to go through. To, that was their last um, experience with the motherland Africa before they were sent to the Americas uh, as uh, slaves. Obviously, a lot of them died en route. So anyway, Marcos Gavi, um, for you there. We move on to 1903, obviously, same day. And uh, this man's name is Joe Pulitzer. He donates $1 million to Columbia University and begins the Pulitzer Prizes in America. So the famous Pulitzer Prize was orchestrated by Joe Pulitzer, pictured here. Obviously a very successful man with a cigar. Okie dokie, 1908, this happened. And that is the first cartoon, essentially. Projection in Paris of the very first animated cartoon called Fantasmagorie. It was realized by Emile Cole. 1908, which is what I was going to say, 1903, beg your pardon. Robert De Niro was born on this day. And that seemed there, looking cool, looking smart, looking dapper. He's from the United States of America. Obviously, his name suggests that he's got Italian ancestry. I did talk about someone who had an Italian ancestry yesterday who founded the Bank of Italy, which later became the Bank of America. So go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so he's an American actor, known for many, many roles, including the young... Vito Corleone in The Godfather Part II, a role for which he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. He's also highly regarded for his role in the 1990 crime film Goodfellas. His longtime collaboration with director Martin Scorsese began with Mean Streets and later earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of Jake LaMotta in the 1980 film Raging Bull. He earned nominations for Taxi Driver in 1976 and Cape Fear in 1991. Also received additional Academy Award nominations for Michael Kimino's The Deer Hunter in 1978, Penny Marshall's Awakenings in 1990, and David O. Russell's Silver Linings Playbook in 2012. He was born in New York City, New York State, United States of America. So happy birthday, Robert De Niro. He's 77 years old today. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's hard to believe, man. Hard to believe. 77. On this day as well, Larry Ellison, 10 years younger than Robert De Niro. 10 years younger? I beg your pardon. One year younger than Robert De Niro. He was born on this day also. And uh, Larry Ellison, if you all know, is a business executive. And his full name is Lawrence Joseph Ellison, pictured right here. You all thought I, missed, I was going to forget his picture, didn't you? 
Anyway, he's an American business magnate, investor, and philanthropist who is a co-founder and the executive chairman and chief technology officer of the Oracle Corporation. As of October 2019, he was listed by Forbes magazine as the fourth wealthiest person in the United States and as the sixth wealthiest in the world with a fortune of 69.1 billion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's with a B, guys. Yeah, 61.9 billion dollars. His fortune increased from 54.5 billion a year earlier. Can you believe that? This guy made 15 billion in 12 months. So a billion plus a month, a billion plus a month, one man made. Anyway, um, yeah, sometimes I ask myself, I mean, these guys who make all this money, how many brains do they have? You know, a lot of us, you know, um, we moan and we say, oh, we can't do this, or this is too hard, or, you know, oh, they're going to, uh, oh, this is um, a scam, you know, and that's another one. You know, the business is registered legally in a country that, and this business has been running for a very, very long time, for decades, and people are jumping in today and they're saying, oh, this is a scam, this is not going to work. But there are people who work in the business, you know, the, the country doesn't see the business as illegal. So what, why do you have a problem with it? People have made a lot of money in this business. And then you just coming in, you have nothing to show for it. You know, you're new. There are people who have made millions out of the business. The business has proven track record. And you come in as a novice and you're saying, oh, it's not going to work because it's a scam. Wow. You know, so guys, if people are telling you something is a scam, go do your due diligence. I'm not saying that there are scams out there. There are, there are many, many scams out there. But do your due diligence. Is it legal in the country? Is it been, uh, in the country where you are? Has it been registered? Does it have any, does it belong to any um, societies, organizations, you know, stuff like that, professional bodies, you know? Um, these are the things you should check out. And then just ignore what people say. People who do not know better, you know, people who are trying to pull you back. At the end of the day, it's about you, your life, and those, your nearest and dearest. You know, those are the people who you want to help. You want to help yourself and help those who are close to you and help the world at large as well. Um, as long as you're not doing anything illegal, you know, you've done your due diligence, the business is legal, forget what anyone else says. It's your life. It's your life. This guy is making over a billion dollars a month. It's a human being like me and you. One brain, two eyes, one nose, one nose, two nostrils, one mouth. I mean, go figure, guys. Anyway, let's move on to 1977. Thierry Henry is a French football player. Born on this day. This is not Thierry Henry, obviously. Do forgive me. This is Sean Penn. So let's go to Sean Penn first. Sean Penn was born on this day in the year figure that out very soon, 1960. He's an American actor, and his full name, this is his picture, by the way, is Sean Justin Penn. He's a director, actor, screenwriter, producer. He's won two Academy Awards for his roles in the mystery drama Mystic River in 2003 and the biopic Milk 2008. We go back to Thierry Henry. Apologies for that again. This handsome dude, who kind of looks like me actually. Born on this day, 1977, the French football player, my favorite football player of all time. You know, bar none. And I'll tell you why. Not necessarily, not necessarily because of his skills, but because of his humility. This is the most humble footballer and most skillful in my mind, because, you know, when you bring humility and skill to the table, you got me, you know, because, you know, when people do not really know how good they are, that floors me, you know, you don't really know how good, like I said, he may not be the most skillful footballer that's ever lived, but in my eyes he is because he's so humble, he's so, so humble, so kudos to this guy. Happy birthday, Thierry, my favorite football player of all time. 
He's a friend, professional football coach now and former player who is currently the manager of Major League Soccer Club, Montreal Impact. He's considered one of the greatest strikers of all time and has often been debated as the greatest player in the history of the Premier League. Often been debated. I didn't even know that. See, I just made my personal opinion known and I didn't even realize that there's a debate as to whether he was the greatest player in the history of the Premier League. Interesting. Okay, so 1945, on this day, Sukamo and Mohamed Hatta declare Indonesia, also called Dutch East Indies, independent from the Netherlands. So these are the guys here, Sukamo and Mohamed Hatta. Last but not least, on this day, George Orwell, his famous book called Animal Farm, was published on this day. So, on that note, we end today's Today in History. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me. Um, and I hope that you give me a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe so that you receive updates of my video uploads. My name again is Sotonye Afiasimana. Stay safe, guys, and I shall see you tomorrow for another edition of Today in History. Bye-bye and good night.